Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Garrett and this is Chaos Core Tech. So today's video is all about learning Fusion 360. I started out modeling in Tinkercad and then a few months ago I was looking to upgrade and so I decided to switch over to Fusion 360 and I know a couple of you out there are in that same boat. So this will be sort of a tutorial on Fusion 360, a getting started guide, but I will be drawing comparisons to Tinkercad. So um, if you've never used Tinkercad before, don't worry, you will still learn a lot here. But if you have used Tinkercad, I will show you some of the um, direct correlations between the two. Now, before we get started, the link to Fusion 360 is down below in the description. And then I also wanted to clear up some confusion about the pricing. Because I hear a lot of people say that they don't use Fusion 360 because they don't want to pay for it. And while it's true that they do have a paid subscription to it, um, if you're a student or um, have a startup company, you can get it for free. And they say that right on the download page. Um, just look around. There's a couple different things that allude to it being free. You can download a free trial for 30 days. And once that 30 days is up, just mark either student or um, startup and you will have Fusion 360 for free unless you make $100,000 a year. But if you're like me, that's not a problem. So we're good. Okay, guys, let's get started. So here we are in Fusion 360 and now I'm going to assume that you have the program downloaded and your account set up and everything and actually if you are a Tinkercad user um, it's the same account and now before we get started um, I'm going to save you a few headaches the first thing you're going to need to do is come up to um, your account over here your name whatever you've got and then come and click preferences and then change this default modeling orientation to Z up um, by default it is to Y up, which I'm not sure why the Fusion 360 would do that. So do that and it, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. And then keep in mind that setting, if you already have a project started um, and saved and everything, that setting will not take effect for that project. So it's only new projects from the point that you change that setting. Um, and basically what that's going to do is when you export the model to 3D print, um, if it still had Y up, it will have it laying down instead of going um, or standing like you created the model. So not a huge deal, but it will save you a few headaches. So as soon as we've got this loaded in, you'll notice that we have a plane here. Um, and navigation is actually quite a bit different than Tinkercad. And this was one of the hardest things for me to learn um, coming from Tinkercad into Fusion 360 is the camera controls. Now, Fusion 360's philosophy with things is they want all of the camera controls to be controlled by your middle mouse button. Um, and something to keep in mind is I am using this on a Windows PC. So I am not sure how Mac handles this because if I remember correctly, um, not all Mac mouses have a scroll wheel. So I'm not 100% sure how Mac handles those. But basically how you do it is um, if you want to zoom in and out, it's just using the scroll wheel just like Tinkercad. And then um, panning the camera left and right is just clicking middle mouse button. I think that's the same as Tinkercad. Um, but actually rotating the camera around in Tinkercad is um, your right mouse button. As you can see, that is not happening on the screen right here. And how Fusion 360 actually does that is you have to hold the shift key and then click the middle mouse button and then you can rotate your camera around. And that's where they lose me. Um, it actually took me a very long time to get used to that, but just keep modeling and you will get there. Um, you can also use this little cube up in the right hand corner, click on it and drag and it'll rotate. And you can also snap to certain um, faces and that's actually very helpful. And then if at any time you're in a weird spot and can't quite figure out how your camera's oriented, you can click this little home thing over here and it'll bring your camera back to this position. So that's helpful. So now that we understand how to use the camera controls, um, the next thing is to actually start creating something. So let's start to get some objects out here. Come up to this drop down over here that is called create. Click that and you can see that we have some boxes, cylinders, spheres, uh, most of the things we would use in Tinkercad. So let's start with a box and just keep it simple. Now if we click this, we'll notice that it is asking us for a plane to put this on. So you can see that it's got your three major dimensions there and we're just gonna go along the X and the Y. So I'm gonna click this plane right here and now it's asking us where we wanna put this box. So this little cursor here, I'm just gonna click in the center and then start dragging out and this rectangle is where we're gonna be putting our box. And we can actually type things in here. So I can go 30 by 60 
and I'll hit enter a couple times and now we have a real tangible box that is 30 by 60 and I can just grab this and drag up or I can specify an amount and hit enter and now I've got a box that I can mess with and now the next thing you're probably going to notice if you're following along is that um, you can't just click and drag to move the model around like you can in Tinkercad and that was another thing that took me quite a while to get used to so your left mouse button just selects things so it'll select faces that you click on it'll select edges um, but it cannot move anything around so there's actually a couple ways you can move it um, you can come up here to this modify tab and come to move and then as soon as you hover over this object it'll give you a couple options um, basically where you want to place your cursor to move it and that's actually a really nice thing because say that I wanted to spin it right around this axis over here um, so this is the center point on this face you can see that they are face specific so let's actually come to use this one right in the center I'll click on that now the center of orientation for this object is right there and I can click this right here to move it this way click this to move it up and down and you can actually just click on one and then this little thing you can type in a number here and that works great um, and then a shortcut for this is also M so you can do that as well once you get out of it and want to go back in but now we can actually rotate around that point and if I click this here I can either type in a number in this little box or I can just hold this and see it rotates around that point and that's actually a very very useful thing and you can do the same for these and say we wanted to rotate around the bottom you can click M and then do this and now it's rotating around the bottom so just be conscious of where you put that and that is how you move objects around another way you can get to that is by right clicking on an object and going to move and that will kind of achieve the same thing and it'll just put the cursor um, wherever your mouse cursor was and you can also free move it by clicking this um, little ball here and you can just move it wherever you want okay so now let's start doing things to this um, and then in typical CAD fashion let's just put a hole through this so I'll come back up here to create go to cylinder and now it's asking me for a plane again and while I can choose one of these default planes I can also choose any of the edges or I can also choose any of the faces on this box and that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna choose this face and then it basically opens up this little sketch window here and I can create a circle and you can actually find the center points by hovering along the edge and see that little triangle that pops up over there um, you can drag that out and that will help you find your center position so if I can see those two blue dotted lines that means I'm exactly in the center so I will click and then bring it out and let's just say I want that 30 hit enter and then this next parameter is the angle I've never really found a use for this angle so I always just click um, there's probably something there that I'm missing but works for me so now we have a cylinder there that we can do things with and we can bring it out like this um, and as you can see this operation over here is set to join so if I were to hit OK right now it would make this box and this cylinder into one solid object effectively like grouping on um, in Tinkercad if I wanted those to be separate objects but basically exactly like this I could open this up and click um, new body and now those will stay in the same position but be completely separated as far as um, edges and stuff goes and then I can also drag it through the other way and set it to cut and now Fusion 360 knows that I want to cut a hole out of that and you can tell that by the red so I'll hit OK and now you can see we've got a hole right through the center of this box so that's all fine and well um, let's throw a sphere in here just for some fun um, I will create it on the bottom over here and once again I will um, try to center it up as much as possible there we go and now you can see we've got a tiny little red sphere there and it's wanting us to cut because that was the last operation we did but I want this to be its own body so you can see it there and then this is just basically dragging it up and I'm gonna set that to 50 and these are actually two separate bodies and how we can tell that is if we come over to the bodies 
uh, menu over here click this little arrow to show what we have and hover over this one so we can see that is one whole body and then body two right here is the sphere and you can actually rename those um, if you want to just by clicking once you have them highlighted and rename it to whatever you want so now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to move it up and I'll move it over a little bit I don't know why you'd want an object like this but just for the sake of demonstration um, so that's where I want it okay and now if I want those to be grouped I can actually come over here to the modify tab and click combine now I can click these two hit OK and they are joined and we can confirm that over here under the body saying seeing that there's only one body now and it has both of those in it now there's actually a few other things we can do with this combine um, we'll click this one first and then click this one and say that we want to cut a hole out right there um, we can come here and set cut and then hit OK and now you can see that it has basically just cut all of that material out similarly to how it would do in Tinkercad and then there's one other really fun thing we can do with this um, we can set intersect and that will basically take any parts of the two objects that are touching each other and cut away everything else so if I hit OK it will just leave us with that fun little shape there and that's actually very useful I've used that on several occasions but for right now I just want these two to be combined so I'll just hit join and hit OK we're good that that's one solid body okay so that should get you set up in at least messing around in Fusion 360 obviously there's a lot more here um, and I will be doing more tutorials very soon um, specifically getting into sketches and that is actually probably where you're gonna spend most of your time um, it, it surprised me too but when I come into Fusion 360 I almost immediately go to the sketches rather than starting with a solid object like this but I will talk about that next time so if you're following along and wanting to learn Fusion 360 um, your homework is just to get in here and start messing around mess with what I've shown you um, and then look forward to my next tutorials so before I sign off and do the outro um, there's one more pretty important step that we need to cover and that is how to get this mo get this model out of here and 3d print it um, and Fusion 360 um, does not make that very apparent how to do that so actually what we're gonna do is you can either spit um, you can either pick specific bodies right here or you can pick the whole project I'm just gonna go with a specific body because we just want that right click it and then come down to save as STL and see we can see that we've got that selected I always leave it as binary that works for me um, and then refinement is set to high and this is basically the quality of the model if you set this to low this sphere is going to have um, visible faces uh, similar to how Tinkercad would show it so if you set it to high it's going to have a lot smaller faces and you won't be able to notice them and then there's also a lot of options here for refinement if you need to get fancier but I found that um, high works extremely well most of the time like, like the bob model that I created a few weeks ago I exported it at low and it looked like I created it in Tinkercad but then I came back here and exported it in high and that's the model that you see right now um, and you probably can't even tell that there are faces on that so high works extremely well just keep in mind that it will uh, make your model file a lot bigger so and a lot it'll take a lot longer to load into like Cura and stuff like that so just pick whatever um, works the best for you so then we can hit OK and it'll bring up your folders to save it out and then from there it's just a normal STL file that you can import into Cura or whatever and print it well there you have it guys I hope that was helpful and can get some of you guys in Fusion 360 and at least moving around a little bit because I know that when I was using Tinkercad and started that transition to Fusion 360 I had a heck of a time learning it um, I actually tried it at one point gave up and went back to Tinkercad for quite a while and then ended up finally going back to Fusion 360 um, and figuring it out from there so that was also kind of my reasoning for making this video because um, you know it's not that difficult once you get in there but uh, that you just have to get over that hump and I, that's where I was stumped up so if I had a video like this when I started it probably would have helped me out so 
that's what I'm doing. Hopefully, hopefully passing that on to you guys. And in addition to this video, I have plans to start making quite a few more Fusion 360 tutorial videos. Um, so you can look forward to those. And if you have any questions specifically, let me know in the comments and I will try to touch on those. Um, I'm not an expert with it um, yet by far, but um, anything I can do to help and share the experience that I've gained in it, I will certainly do. So there will definitely be more coming your way. And then I think I will leave this video at that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you're wondering what to watch next, check the little eye up in the corner. And then if you found this video helpful, make sure you like, share, and then get subscribed if you're not already. All right, thank you guys for joining me. See you next time.